of Mitzcheta, which you see behind me, is the location of one of the oldest Jewish communities outside of Israel. It's believed that Jewish exiles came here after the destruction of the first temple. Here's more on the history of the Georgian Jews in this next report. For well over a century, the Great Synagogue of Tbilisi has been an active reminder of the strong Jewish community of Georgia, dating back thousands of years. Every Saturday, Monday, and Thursday, we come here and serve God by praying and blessing the society. Rafael Messingizer and his cousin are the only Kohanim still remaining in Georgia, a country with a profound Jewish history that is unlike anywhere else in the diaspora. This country has always been an amazing environment for Jews throughout history. Jews have never been bullied or oppressed. We only experienced hardship during the 1950s when the Soviet government shut down religious establishments. I remember as a child we were not able to go to synagogue. We prayed underground in basements. Georgian Christians helped us hide ourselves and support our religious duties. Georgians would never ever tell anybody what we were doing. Nowadays, only 2,500 Jews remain, but the history of the Jews of Georgia actually dates back at least 26 centuries. Jews lived here during the First Temple period, but the mass exodus arrived after the destruction of Solomon's Temple in 586 BC. Historians say Jewish exiles fled to Georgia during the 6th century BCE when Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem and exiled the Jewish people. Professor, researcher, and author Givi Gambashidzai is the director of the David Baazov Museum of the History of the Jews. There is also reason to believe that the biblical account of Abraham and Sarah's tent was actually located in Georgia's Caucasus Mountains. The first exile of Jews from Jerusalem in the 6th century BCE settled in Mikseta, a beautiful city nestled in a valley between two rivers. There is another historical source dating back to the period of Alexander the Great that tells us when Alexander passed through Georgia, kings and queens in Mikseta could speak Hebrew. Here we have four types of graves dating back to the 5th century CE to the 9th century CE. Even though archaeologists have only hit the tip of the iceberg discovering this nearby ancient cemetery, there is reason to believe evidence of Jewish cemeteries will be uncovered in the area. Archaeology is growing so fast, it is full of surprises. Of course, we believe that any time discoveries will confirm the stories we've been talking about. Jewish historian and professor Leila Tsitsu Ashvili is the chief curator of exhibitions at the Georgian National Museum. He is writing that it's it. amulet belongs to Abraham's son of Sarah, and there are blessings on this amulet. I think it's uh, one of the important oldest artifacts of the Jewish heritage in Georgia. This pendant, written in Aramaic, was discovered on a grave in Mikseta, dating back to around the 4th century CE. Jews who lived here could understand Aramaic language, and they helped her to split ideas of Christianity among Georgians, and uh, maybe first converted uh, Christians in Georgia were Jews. This also explains why Mikseta is also the cradle of early Christianity. It's believed the Jewess Sidonia is buried in this monastery, holding a piece of Jesus' shroud from his crucifixion. Yes, we believe it is true. We know that between the first century BC and the first century CE, Georgian Jews were communicating from country to country. We also know from historical sources of the life of Jesus that before he was crucified, rabbis from many nearby territories were called back to Jerusalem because they were the wise and clever scholars that sat and judged Jesus before he would be crucified. So no exception for Georgian Jews. This also sheds light on the over 2,000-year history of love and coexistence between Georgian Jews and Christians and even Muslims. It's worth mentioning that 200 BC to 200 CE was one of the biggest migration waves of Jews recognized by historical sources. 
At the peak of history, there were over 120,000 Jews living in Tbilisi and 30 other regions of Georgia. Jews never experienced problems during the Crusades and the Byzantine era. Throughout the centuries, Georgians never betrayed the Jews, and when there was a moment to fight, they would always fight together. We are like genetic cousins coming from the same source and even have many people with biblical names. It's even believed that Georgia's royal dynasty, who ruled from the 9th till the 19th centuries, are direct descendants of biblical King David. King David IV, known as David the Builder, was the greatest king of Georgia. He united the whole Caucasian region, from the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea. He is recognized by sources as King number 78 after biblical David. And what's more, his great-granddaughter, Tamar, was an empowered 12th century ruler given the title of king. He announced her as the co-king of the country and they ruled the country together for several years until the father was actually later died and uh, she became the king of Georgia. And if you just see her even costumes on the fresco, she's dressed like a father only with a little different details on the fresco that you definitely see that she is the female. The secret formula for harmony amongst all Georgians is still in place to this very day, even though the majority left for Israel during the 20th century. A lot of Georgians still have the best memories about their friend who um, left Georgia in 1970s or in 1990s. They always kept these memories and always with the sadness are talking about the times when uh, Georgian cities, Georgian villages were full of Jews. We dance Georgian, sing and speak Georgian, and we're similar to local Georgians, and that is why we're called Georgian Jews.